like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars privileges and the advantages that show up in the life of any individual and any people who are able to successfully host the presence of god i will run through a few scriptures to show you the things that happen in the lives of men on account of the fact that god was with them very very powerful genesis 39 very quickly maybe three or four for the sake of time and then we establish a few things and pray genesis 39 this was the story of joseph we'll read verse 2 genesis 39 and verse 2 that joseph was in prison and yet here's what the bible has to say about him and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man so there is a relationship between the presence of God and the prosperity of the saints. To prosper means to excel. To prosper means to do well. That the reason behind the prosperity of Joseph, even though he was in prison, there was a factor that distinguished him. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man, the Bible declares. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian regardless the fact that he was not an Egyptian there was a distinguishing effect of the presence of God upon him and he was a prosperous man let's go to verse 21 same chapter in verse 21 39 verse 21 again the Bible says but the Lord was with Joseph so prosperity is tied to the presence of God Number two, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. That when a man truly desires mercy and favor, then God must be with you. Because the Lord was with a young Jewish boy, God showed him mercy and even showed him favor even while he was in prison. Are we together? Number three. Exodus chapter 33. From verse 13. I'm running through scripture to show you the value. The value of the presence of God. Exodus 33. 13 and 14. Now therefore I pray you. Moses is praying. If I have found grace in your sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee and I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Verse 14, hallelujah. And he said, the gift I will give you to end this confusion as far as leadership is concerned, the gift that I will give you, these are a stiff-necked people. They will not listen to you ordinarily. But here is the secret to your rest, my presence. God is speaking to someone already. My presence, more than your skill, my presence, more than education, my presence will go with you. And as a result, I will give you rest. Is this not what you are looking for? rest from all the troubles and the vicissitudes of life where you lie down and you can't sleep he makes me to lie down in green pastures his presence connected to rest when jesus showed up in john chapter 8 and verse 29 here's what he said john chapter 8 and verse 29 jesus when he showed up here's what he had to say he said and he that sent me is with me my father had not left me alone for i always do the things that please him he that sent me is with me i don't need to fear i don't need to fear i'm not alone when he sent me he went with me the bible says the lord and his spirit had sent me are we blessed? 
Let's look at two more scriptures. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 25. Daniel 3, 25. We'll just read 25 for the sake of time. Remember the three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says on account of their allegiance, their refusal to bow to this 90 feet stature that was built. They said, O king, we will not be careful to answer you in this matter. Our Lord will deliver us. And the Bible says they made the fire seven times hotter to the extent that those who threw them were burned. And yet these gentlemen entered into that fire. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart for the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Three men thrown. But they suddenly saw the fourth man, the divine presence. It was the same presence that was with Daniel when he was in the lion's den. Let me tell you this. The cure for fear and the ability to pass through life and pass through challenges. And they look at you and they may never, you bring, you went through this. Yes, sir. The presence of God has a system of immunity. It can cover you. Are we together now? Immunity. In 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 12, I wish I had time. 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 12. Do you know there is a dimension of reverence and honor that comes to the life of an individual when you carry divine presence? Read with me please, verse 12. Ready? Please read. And Saul was afraid of David. Why? Because the Lord was with him. How can a king be afraid of a young harmless teenager? What did Saul see? That made him a young boy. What would David do to a king? But the Lord was with him. There is divine presence you can carry. And every devil, human and spiritual. The fear of you. Will come upon everyone. Is a spirit of reverence. There is an aura of reverence. Upon a man. When you carry divine presence. Now. Isaiah 43. This will be a safe landing place tonight. Isaiah 43. From verse 1 and 2. Let this be a prophecy for someone. And let it be a word of hope for someone. But. Now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. Fear not, in spite of the times that we live in, fear not, in spite of the noisome pestilences, fear not, in spite of wars and rumors of wars, fear not, in spite of the fear, what will happen to my children, fear not. For I have redeemed you, he says. I have called you. Even by name, you are mine. Verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Just verify if I am there. Once I am there, stop being afraid. Even if the boat is going up and down, check if Jesus is there. If you find him, even if he's sleeping in the boat, find rest. Trouble starts for you if he's not there. If you are alone, then you will be afraid. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. That's the only assurance you need. You don't need to verify if the boat is working correctly. You just be sure that I am there. When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through fire, thou shall not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon you and the simple secret is I am with you I am with you and the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following the Lord walking with them that's the secret divine presence I learned this in life and I learned this in ministry and the presence of God became and it still remains my highest pursuit 
and my highest obsession. I assure you the presence of God will give you what money cannot buy. The presence of, give, of God will give you what your background cannot give you. Divine presence. The rich asset of God's presence, the Shekinah of God, at work in the life of a man, at work in the life of a woman. One time, this timid disciple called Peter, listen carefully, Peter was just an ordinary fisherman, but this man had been with Jesus so much, he had received a rub off of that presence. A time came, the Bible says, that same man, his shadow, it was not his shadow, it was the effulgence of the presence of God from him. That he passed people who were ill, who were sick. Divine presence. The one thing that Satan will fight in the life of a believer is the presence of God. He knows what happens to you when you, the presence of God is not with you. The Bible says, and Cain departed from the presence of God. The psalmist knew this and he said, cast me not away from you. you I, I would give up the throne, but cast me not away from your presence. He says, and take not your spirit from me. When God walks with a man, when a man can secure divine presence, it becomes a secret to an invincible life. You will experience dimensions of victory and favor in a way that you will not imagine. When you carry divine presence, men will be compelled to help you. They will be compelled to support what you stand for. It's a charm-like sense of attraction. Even you, you will not be able to explain. Why are they interested in me? Presence. Let that presence come upon your business and you will marvel and wonder what happens. Let that presence come upon your ministry. It will not just be the oratory. It's not just what you are saying that there is a glory that is upon it. Let that presence come upon the work that you do. Was it not under the influence of that presence that a rod that had no root yet it budded? A rod that had no root. Don't tell me you are not connected. I don't know anybody. A rod without root. It was not connected to the earth. Nothing produces until it is connected to the earth. That was the instruction. But in God's presence, the rules are, there, there's an exemption. That a rod not connected to the earth. If you are that rod, even if you are not connected to the earth, you can still blossom. Because you are under the influence of that presence. Hallelujah. The glory of his presence resting upon you, distinguishing you, bringing beauty and honor and glory to your life in a way that will marvel you. But for tonight, very quickly, I'm not just interested in marketing the presence of God alone, but I hope by the spirit of God that God will help us to show us the protocol. There is a protocol for accessing divine presence. As important as the revelation is, if we just stop in celebrating the possibilities that come when he is there, it may not profit us. We must, there must be a road map, a pathway that can lead anyone from where you are to that realm where you are able to access and attract divine presence. If you're with me, say amen. Can you pray in the spirit in one minute? Lord, open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Shalakato sadly brendeko shidaka hasiakata. Open my eyes, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is a protocol. And there is a formula that can help men carry the presence of God. Many years ago, when I knew that the call of God was upon my life, I prayed a sincere prayer. I said, Lord, do not send me with just a sermon. Do not send me with just a message. 
the world that you're going to be sending me to need more than a message more than a sermon there must be a divine backing the reality of your presence producing tangible results edging your impact in the life of the hearers the listeners cutting across the time and space and blessing people grant me access to the gift of your presence and then i had an encounter please listen in one of these encounters i had a voice and he said son from today i give you my presence as a gift and then all of a sudden i look in that vision and i'm seeing this being standing like an angel and he said this angel will walk with you and i said what is his name and the voice said he's called the angel of the lord's presence i don't mean to brag but when it has to do with the issues of the presence believe me i know what i'm saying the signs the wonders prosperity increase influence chasing after these things directly is a waste of time it's going to be a journey that will inevitably end up in humiliation the secret is to seek him when you find him everything connected to him will come it will gravitate towards you divine presence is the key it is the pursuit that is worth our time and worth everything but what then is the formula? How come certain people seem to carry very superior dimensions of God's presence? When you listen to them, it's like there is a touch of heaven upon them. You know that this is not a man talking alone. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 13. The Lord is speaking to me that there are three people here. He's been trying to call you. His call is upon your life. But he's been trying to draw you to deeper levels of intimacy. And the Lord is saying he brought you to this meeting because it's time for you to know him in a deeper level more than church more than religion more than a sunday service i don't know who that person is and those people but i'm speaking to you this is by the spirit the lord is saying it's time for the distractions in your life it's time for these distractions please help them there are many distractions clamoring for your attention but the lord is saying that all i want is to help you know me because when you find me all the things that you are seeking for that men claim to be able to give you they can only be found in my presence i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me i am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me i am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me yeah. The first key, please listen to me. The first key, if you really want to host the manifested presence of God in your life. By the way, the issue of the manifested presence of God has nothing to do with being in ministry. It has nothing to do with being a man of God, apostle, prophet, pastor at all. The first key is an encounter that produces a hunger and a passion for God. Love. Love. Only desperate lovers of God will be able to host this dimension of his presence. And ye shall seek me 
And only find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So there is a relationship between presence and your heart. Remember the discourse between Jesus and the woman at the well. The Samaritan woman. The discussion started with the issue of water. And eventually the issue of worship came into it.